grab it, Eric. Jesus, throw it. We gotta take Let's a unit to Frostburg today. So, yep. And. Oh. Cash, too. Alright, guys, so I am taking a unit to a good friend of mine today that uh, purchased from here. Uh, remember, guys, you can actually purchase from both me and Mark. We can help you out. Um, Eric did leave his truck keys lay and left us a little bit of cash on his desk. So when we take it up to the Frostburg area, um, we're going to hit a couple of things in Frostburg. Um, and we're going to go over some towing tips and things like that because it's going to be a little road trip for us. So we'll kind of go over a few things to do. But we're doing it with Eric's truck without him noticing. So even though we are taking his truck, and I don't know how to operate it apparently, Still grabbing our tool bag because we definitely want that kind of stuff. And grabbing this stuff. I always make sure I've got a first aid kit with me and it is winter time. So uh, we're going to Frostburg. Make sure you have some blankets and stuff like that. All right, guys, let's go hook up to the trailer. Hope Eric's still in service and we'll see how this goes. I mean, I, I, other than the fact that we are literally videotaping us stealing our boss's truck, which of the things we could videotape is probably not the best idea. We gotta kind of hope that he's in service still. I think he was supposed to be over there most of the day. I don't see him over there. All right, so there's my buddy's trailer that we gotta hook up to. Now, the cool thing is, last night before I went home, I made sure to do the basic stuff prior to this trip, so we're safe there. And back up here. So, every manufacturer that I'm aware of recommends checking your lug nuts torque prior to your toe. Now that's not the first toe, that's every toe. So what you want to make sure you do is buy a torque wrench. You can get them at Harbor Freight for a little bit of nothing. Also check tire pressure before every trip. We did that last night. I did it yesterday morning. Last night it was the same tire pressure, so I know I'm good. Torque the lug nuts, know we're good. So let's go over the rest of the hook up here. All right, so we're going to get this trailer raised up. We're going to get it fairly level. And then we're going to be using an adjustable hitch on this one. We preach weight distribution, but we know not everybody uses it. So this gives us an opportunity. Our boss obviously doesn't use it. We're going to get the opportunity to talk about how to do it if you're not using weight distribution. Again, spend the money on weight distribution. I think we're getting pretty close to level. For those of you that have an iPhone, if you open up the app that says measure and click over to the right, there's actually a built-in level there now. All right, so that's pretty darn close. So at this point, what I'm gonna say is that's gonna be riding just about right. I do want the ball a little bit higher than what the trailer is going to ride at naturally for that level pitch the reason being is whenever you put the weight on the back of the truck without weight distribution it's going to sag a little bit so it kind of gets the trailer back to level keeping weight as even as possible We're going to do this the same way every time. Trailer goes down. Okay, and we're going to start at the top and work our way down. It doesn't matter how your setup works. Everybody gets caught up with, well, Junior did this first on one. Okay, so the top thing on this one is going to be my safety pin. We're going to raise that back up. Make sure that we've got a good connection there. I'm also going to plug my seven way in. Okay. So what I'm looking for on this is you can see this bar raising up and I'm going to start lifting against the vehicle and we can see that I'm lifting the vehicle which is good which means this thing is attached correctly. All right. 
get the safety chains. Mark's going to have to help me with the one. And safety cable. Bring this tongue jack all the way off the ground. All right guys, still we're gonna do our safety check. So headlights on, turn signal. I'm going left side first and I'm gonna cover down this left side, okay? Check my hitch. My hitch pin is in, my safety cables are on, my seven way is on, good to go. Light works, baggage door. We're gonna lock all of these as we go around. Steve just came by, so I'm hoping Eric's still over on service. Yeah, but I can't remember which one is it. Yeah, that one. All right, locked, okay. Windows, secured, secured, secured caps on do a final inspection on my tires guys when you're checking your tire pressure make sure you're checking the tread and looking for dry cracks look for them on the sidewalls and in the actual tread of the tires knife valves are closed cap is on power cord is closed service cap, this bumper cap is on okay look good we're going to do one more pass down this side then we're going to do the opposite side. I got turn signal there and on the front. So let's go to the right side now. Checking the truck and the trailer all in one. And we are going to take a second look at the hitch. This is the third time we're looking at it, guys. That's how important it is. All right. So we're good there. And looks like I may want to grab a little lock lube. If you haven't seen our lube video on how to lubricate these baggage door hitches or baggage door latches, check that out. Mark, I am going to need to find those keys. There they are. Because we need the actual key to lock the deadbolt. Deadbolt is secure. Handle is secured. And again, triple checking stuff. Boom. Three ways to ensure. Steps are in. Steps are locked. Good there, good there. Stove vent covered. Refrigerator panel. Good to go. That's good. Another look at the tires. We look good there. And we are going to lock as soon as I find Mark's 751 key. There it is. Boom, we're locked there. Good there, good there, good there awnings in turn signals are all working lights are all on Alrighty, good deal i'll show you a quick trick on how to do your brakes because if you're by yourself you can't at least that's what i was told grab your big massive soe tool bag take that Drop it right on the brake pedal. My brake controller is reading, and I can go back here. Oh, shut the turn signal off. And brake lights are lit up. We can see that is brighter than what it was before. So we're good to go. All right, let's get on with this uh, hijacking. All right, so we're rolling out. Now, one of the things that we get all the time is we've got a Prodigy P2 in this brake for a brake controller here. And what I'm doing is I've got it set at seven and a half and I've got it at a brake boost of two. And that feels like the truck and the trailer are stopping evenly. And we're just gonna pay attention to that. We've got the brake controller set at about seven and a half. And what I wanna feel, me personally, is I don't wanna feel the trailer pushing me, but I don't wanna feel it pulling me. So if you've never set up a brake controller before, my advice is going to be started at seven and a half and see how it feels from there. If you feel like the trailer is ripping you backwards, back it down a little bit. If you feel like it's pushing you forwards, go ahead and just bump it up a hair. 
but other than that guys we're gonna go down here um probably do need to get some fuel because eric doesn't top off his vehicles and uh we'll grab some monsters it's a road trip without monsters all right guys we'll see you in a bit So, one of the things that I recommend whenever you're stopping for fuel is be smart about it. Everybody gets caught up with where the fuel price is going to be, and I get that. If you're smart enough to top off your vehicle the night before, your luxury is whatever fuel station you want. If I'm driving, I typically stop every about two hours or so, every two to four hours max, and I'm looking for flying J's, love truck stops, things like that. With our diesels, when we're towing with our big 350s and we've got big fifth wheels on the back and stuff like that, then it's not a real big issue because we pull right into the fuel aisles, any of the, uh, you know, into the 18 wheeler fuel aisles, and we've got a 400 mile range. Whenever you're driving a gas truck like this, one of the things I'm going to definitely recommend is stopping into these Flying J's. You'll see how much bigger the parking lots are. Plus, they do have a lot of amenities inside, like Monsters. Also, they typically have at least one fast food restaurant in there and some, you know, grab and go like candy and stuff like that for you that like that kind of stuff. I don't know that there's too many people that don't like candy. I just don't need it. But look how much bigger that is and how easy that'll be to swing in. All right, so we were talking about this coming down the road. So one of the things we're doing is we're going up to an area that I know fairly well. My mother was uh, born and raised there. And we're going to hit a couple of places on our way up there. Or once we drop the trailer off, um, there's a hot dog place and there's a place to get great bologna. And what I wanted to kind of do is, like I know a lot of you guys watch this YouTube video channel from all over the country. And I appreciate it. If you guys like the idea of seeing what's all around us to understand that you can come here for more than just buying a trailer, make sure you share this video and share the crap out of it and make sure you like it and tell all your friends to like it. So we can look at our boss and go, Eric, we need to go out to Gettysburg. We need to go to Antietam. We need to show you down in Harper's Ferry. Um, all these historical places right around us. We're, we're an hour from the Washington DC area. We can show you how to get down there and this, you know, obviously the stuff to do down there. We can do all of that, but we need you guys' help. So along with stealing his truck today, please make sure you like this video and share it so we can tell him that we did it for the right reasons. All right guys, so one of the things that just happened was this big traffic backup, which is awesome. We didn't obviously plan this, but it, it went from about 65 miles an hour to about 15 like that. And I've got a trailer on here. So goes back to, I try to make sure I keep a good following distance. Know how long it takes to stop your truck and trailer guys and understand that it's gonna take longer. So do not be on the back bumper of the person in front of you because you could be the pile up accident that happens here. Understand that the car in front of you was probably going to be texting and driving. I think it's one in three probably are texting and driving while they're moving down the interstate at some point. So please make sure that if you are uh, towing a trailer, even if you're not, make sure you leave that proper following distance, but increase it a little bit. Looks like we got smooth highways for the rest of the way. Little rain, but other than that, we're good. I told Mark to get on the roof rack that he'd get better footage, but he didn't want to. I don't understand that. So the crazy things that you see while you're traveling down the highway, we just saw a woman with a parrot on her shoulder while driving. All right, so this is gonna be some of the things we want in the comments. What's the craziest stuff you've seen while traveling down the highway? Like as far as like monkeys on shoulders, parrots on shoulders, goofy stuff like that. People eating cereal out of bowl. And if you see a vehicle pulled over on the right side of the road, move from the right lane over to the left lane give that person a little bit of space if it's you you want the space all right guys comment down below
and there is a ton of stuff to do up here. We're only going to be able to hit a couple of restaurants today. Um, but there is, if you, if you are a train person, you probably already know about Cumberland, but there are some really interesting things to do up here. And there's a state park that we're gonna be passing that would be an awesome little camping spot for you. And then you can hit some stuff at Hancock, you can hit some stuff in Cumberland, you can hit some stuff in Frostburg. Um, there's all kinds of good things up there. La is another fun town to be in. Um, again, just rich with history film that because that looks cooler than me so we're getting uh, to the top of the mountain here um, we are going to stop at this rest area typically I would not but I want to show you guys what I if I am pulling into a rest area what we're doing um, there the biggest thing to keep in mind is if you guys don't have physical maps man they, every rest area has got to make sure you have them for each state um, that you're going to be traveling through but notice I'm in the right hand lane okay I'm Cruise right along at 60. I'm not tacking this thing out coming up the hill. And we hear it all the time in the dealership. Well, I want to make sure I'll be able to get up the hill. Trust me, you'll be able to get up the hill. It's a modern day vehicle. You're not going to be, you know, pushing the thing, okay? But don't be in a rush. It's not, you know, it's not a race to get to the campsite. I promise you, the campsite will still be there when you get there. Um, leaving plenty of time, leave yourself distance. Take it easy. This is supposed to be fun and relaxing. And Mark, we're what, about 45 minutes into the trip? And you can't even feel it. I mean, it's been awesome. And now part of it is because we did steal a really nice GMC Denali <laughs> to do the trip in. But now when you pull into the rest area, there's always a sign that's going to suggest a speed. Okay? Pay attention to that because they've got it pretty well figured out. It is going to be tighter. You are coming off the interstate. So if you were doing 70 on the flats or 80, I don't know what state you're in at that point, then it, you know, you're going to be up a little bit. Now, heads up because there's always these brown signs, at least in Maryland and Pennsylvania, that says RVs and buses and parked cars. Okay? Follow the signs, pull up, and you want to stay to the left when you're pulling into these. Okay? And then just pull in gradually. And obviously, do not try to hit any of the people walking and talking on their cell phones. And if you're walking around on the uh, rest areas, please be sure to keep your head up so you can see everything that's going on. Like a bird on a tree I'm just sitting here I got time It's clear to see From up here The world seems small We can sit together It's so beautiful You and me meant to be in the great outdoors forever free take a certain skill set though. Oh yeah, I can do that. I'm not nearly more than no. for that. <laughs> I'd go through like four or five that signs in the first hour. Dude, I'd just give up and sit. <laughs> So one of the things that I was really enjoying coming through that uh, area um, coming into Cumberland. It's windy, twisty, drops down to like 40. There's a lot of on and off ramps there. This has got the P2 brake controller. Now the P3 from Prodigy will have the same feature. It's called a brake boost. And I mentioned at the beginning of this video that I was running on brake boost too. 
Well, coming into that area, I bumped it up to brake boost three. I didn't have to turn the brake controller up and mess with any of my settings. All I had to do is reach down, press one button, and it's going to increase how quick those brakes grab and activate, um, which does make it really nice when you need just a little bit quicker response in those tight areas with heavy traffic and things like that. So that is an awesome feature. If you have it, make sure you're using that feature. If you don't, consider purchasing one because it is worth its money. Really hoping that's not a tornado warning, Mark. Yeah, that would not be pleasant today. The clouds look right for it. Eric, we're sorry we stole your truck. You got it caught in a tornado. I'm sorry. You can see this beautiful bridge from the interstate. And probably right off the side, you can just You'll see kayakers through here occasionally too. Won't see me kayaking through here. guys so we dropped the trailer off we're going to go get some hot dogs gonna give you a little footage of downtown Cumberland here so I have this towing bag sitting on my desk this is uh, one of SOE's uh, toiletry bags that I keep gloves and all kinds of stuff for towing cell phone chargers and all that stuff so if I'm towing something that day I grab that bag and it's got everything Eric does not have a locking hitch on his truck but he doesn't secure his keys on his desk either so who can be surprised with that Take your hitch off and put it away if you don't have a hitch lock. Um, I like bolt locks. They lock off the vehicle's ignition key then. Um, we've done videos on those in the past, but definitely take a look at it. If you don't have any way of uh, locking up your hitch, get it in the back of the vehicle. That way it does, it's there whenever you come back. All right, let's go get some hot guys if you're in the Cumberland area one place you have to stop is down here to get a hot dog I'm gonna introduce this gentleman here go ahead and give me a little bit about you and your store and tell me what you're about my name is Gino Gadris I'm third generation we're Greek Italian immigrants we've been in town since 1918 we're 102 years old and we're known for our wiener we do ground mustard famous chili sauce and onions you can't find anything better man we get people to come around from around the world come in here and with that little bit of taste of home, here's where they come, man. They want to get re-centered right here. Because in here, hardly nothing changes, man. Just my tattoos. <laughs> no, it's an awesome little place. Cumberland is a fun town to spend the day in and get lost in. So once you get the trailer parked, go ahead, stop down to Cumberland. There, You don't need a plan to be here. The only plan you need to have is stop down here for a wiener. That's it, man. Exactly. It's a fun place to be, man. Hook up, unhook here, and relax. That's what I tell people to do. Alrighty. Thank you so much you for bet, your time. Man. Have My a great pleasure, day. Man. Thanks.
I love the fact that Mark's hot dog's already gone. Alrighty guys, downtown Cumberland. As you can see, ton of stuff to do down here. CNO Canal's here. It is the end of the CNO Canal. Um, runs all the way down into the DC area. When you are down here, the absolute first thing you've got to do, and we did it before we even started shooting this, was stop over here at Curtis's famous wieners. Um, I said hot dogs a couple of times. He did smack me, which I really appreciate because it is wieners. Um, fantastic food, fantastic atmosphere. Um, owner is top notch. So you definitely need to stop there. Don't eat at McDonald's. That's the place. All righty, guys, I'm just finishing up my fries. Tony. Downtown Cumberland, awesome little town. Um, tons of little art galleries, tons of museums. If you are into history, if you're into trains, this is definitely the place to be. We've got old churches up on the hill. There's Masonic buildings up there. Mark was taking a uh, shot of that theater set up over there. Um, it is a cool little walking town and it's not super long. So the kids aren't gonna get tired like halfway through it and you're carrying them for the rest of it. So this is definitely one of those places that you wanna stop at and bring the family. Guys, we're off to uh, Frostburg now. We're headed to B&B. &B. Um, those of you who've been there before know exactly why we're going, but let's go up there and we'll show you what we're interested in next. improving the road by making the traffic pattern inconvenient for you but we're going to improve the traffic pattern once the traffic pattern is made less convenient all right so we were just talking about this and when we sat down i told mark to order two hot dogs his complaint was he goes i literally got a lot of enjoyment out of the hot dog because you wouldn't think that a hot dog would be that good and yes 20 30 minutes later we are still talking about a hot dog and I said, you need to get two, you eat the hot dog, then eat whatever else you wanted to get on the menu. I got a hamburger, he got a fish and cheese. And he goes, man, the fish and cheese was good, but man, that hot dog, I wanted another one. I told you to get two. So here's life tips. Get two hot dogs when you stop in at Coney's. Mark wanted to get on footage of Chevy actually being able to pass something. I think we're slightly advantaged. Sorry, Eric. Half mile out. I can smell it. It, it, it actually, you, you can't smell it. Eric's truck stinks. We really can't smell anything over the truck. Alright guys, B&B &B meat, Frostburg bologna. You have to stop here. They got hot, they got regular. This is another one when you're up in this Frostburg, Cumberland area. This is a quick stop off the interstate that you have to make almost. Um, again, we'll already have the camper parked at the campsite for this one, um, depending on the size of it. If you got a 42 foot long toy hauler, it'll be a little tight in through here. But I'm telling you, this is worth the stop. That right there is a good sled in hill. I don't care. I mean, cross traffic is one thing. It's only meant for the strong kids. Bet you there's some cool stuff in that building. I started to notice a shimmy in the front end, Eric. Ever since I hit that one rock in that third pothole and ran over that speed bump. So as you can see guys, we got another museum here. Um, we actually do have a train uh, exhibit here too. They do the big turnaround. Actually Mark here, come on down this way. And it's been years since I've seen it, but they bring the locomotives in this way. They put them onto the big carousel. The carousel turns the whole way around, spins the locomotive around and sends it back down the rail. It's actually a really cool thing to see. 
Um, definitely check the hours because as you can see, they've got their hours posted there. Keep up on the website though, guys. We're gonna put links in the video down below. So make sure you're clicking these links because this video may be up for 10 years. Um, Cumberland and Frostburg both have a lot of ride on train um, things too, where there are either day trips or even two day trips where you ride on the train, move through the mountains. It is absolutely beautiful. I mean, you get views that you cannot get any other way other than by these locomotives. So guys, that's something else to check out when you're in this area camping. Alright guys, sadly we are headed back to the dealership at this point. It's been a fun day. I've I had a lot of fun coming up here to Cumberland and Frostburg and going around showing you a couple of the things that I enjoy in these towns um, as far as things to do and stuff like that. But at the end of the day we do have to go back to work. But your camping trip can last a lot longer. If you're coming down to see us to pick up an RV, there is things to do to turn this into a small little excursion for the family and whether you want to do a two day four day two weeks whatever there's plenty of stuff to do in this area um talk about the tow vehicle a little bit right now it is a 2000 something or another i did not get the model year off of eric before i stole his keys this morning so it is a 2000 something gmc denali i'm sure that the uh suburban equivalent would do about the same um, I was really surprised with the power. Uh, we tow with nothing but the big diesel 350s, um, which of course have plenty of power. That being said, this thing did really good coming up the hills. We weren't trying to make it a race truck, we weren't making it a race, but I felt like I had plenty of power um, through it. It did not have weight distribution and sway, and we could tell that through probably 75% of it. Um, I do highly recommend it. Um, we tried something today. Guys, don't try it yourselves. Get the equalizer system. Spend the extra money and keep your family safer. Um, but it really did not do as bad as I thought it was going to. Um, this thing's got 125,000 miles in it. Eric, you got a check engine light on. Sorry about that, brother. No, it's a tire pressure monitor. The tires are fine. It just says that the tire pressure sensor is not working. So you'll want to get that fixed. It's probably when we hit that curb. But we had a lot of fun doing this video. Guys, if there's other places that you want us to do, um, or if you like this video and you want us to find some other places, we've talked about Harper's Ferry, Gettysburg, Antietam, DC. Uh, we just passed the sign for Morgantown, West Virginia, which is a fun place in itself. Uh, but guys, comment down below. Make sure you like and subscribe this to the channel. Uh, make sure you share this video around because the more views this one gets, the easier it is going to be to look at Eric and go, hey, we need to do another road trip. Our customers want it. So guys, any questions you have, drop in the comments. We'll try to answer them as best as possible. Make sure you follow us on Instagram as well, Keystone RV Center. Have a great day. Thanks for tuning in.